we gotta make a short about that. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another video. And today we're talking about Canon's 100 to 500 millimeter telephoto RF lens. That's a mouthful. Let us begin the discussion. All right, this bad boy is going to cost you $28.99 USD. This is not a cheap lens. And it's $28.99 for a lens that's a little bit on the slower side because it is 500 millimeters. It's a 4.5 to 7.1 aperture. So my hair looks funny. Sorry, I can't look at myself like this. Why is it so puffy up top? So this isn't necessarily going to be the fastest lens coming in at a 4.5, but you're not really choosing this to crush backgrounds and have the most bokeh possible. You're gonna get some of that naturally anyway, based on the compression this lens has because it's such a long focal range. You're, you're shooting at 500 mil. Now, if you're shooting sports or like we were doing on the weekend, F1, you got stuff that's moving really fast. You're utilizing motion blur. You're panning with the car to try to stop the action. So when you're shooting at a focal range on a lens that's got a 500 millimeter capability, even if you're shooting at 200 and you're tracking that car and you're trying to stop it dead center, you're going to get that blurred background anyway because of the pan. This is probably like the best shot I got from this weekend. But you'll notice that car is dead sharp in the center. It might be just behind, like on the right side of the car that you can't really see. I think that wasn't even at 200 millimeters because it wasn't that far away. It still compressed it beautifully and the panning gave me the motion blur I needed to make that background not distracting and make that car stand out and make it look like it was going because it was super fast. I should take it out of this case. Uh, when you get it, it comes in this case. We're working at the camera shop. They've always had these nice little bags with them. It's a beefy lens. It's got the new lens hood. This little window, that's for uh, adjusting your filters. Now, one thing they've changed on the lens hood here, it's, it's machined with like a bunch of ribbed lines in the middle. You can kind of hear that. It used to be felt. Also the hoods on the old EF lenses used to be black. There used to be a push pull version of like a 100 to 400 and you would push the lens and it would extend. This is still just spinning the barrel, but it also extends from within. It's long. Bring on the jokes. <laughs> you're standing out when you're using this lens. Imagine that on the end of a pro body. It looks huge. It's got your stabilizer modes, which have been there forever. So stabilizing everything or stabilizing just your pan, you can turn that off with on and off here. Autofocus, manual focus, and then your full focus distance or you're focusing to infinity or whatever you're shooting. Your control ring is down here. I think it's cool. I get it. It makes sense. I've never used the control ring on an RF lens once. I've just never needed it. Your manual focus is here and then it has your smooth and tight ring. So when you have that ring tight, that zoom there's more resistance on it, opposed to when it's loose, it goes faster. Very well built, weather sealed. These things can take a beating. I've always had a 7200 in my kit at all times. This is a new addition because I wanted to see how good the 500 millimeter was and if it was gonna come in handy beyond the 200 that I'm used to shooting. That's kind of what I was curious on. The second thing I was curious on was I can spend a whole hell of a lot less and buy the non-L version. Now I'm losing 100 millimeters in the focal range because this is a 100 to 400, it's an F5. It's smaller, it's lighter. Now it's not weather sealed, I'm outside shooting F1. You saw that shot. What do you notice? Water everywhere, kicking up behind that car, which looks insane. So for me as a photographer, raining that day was perfect. But if I'm outside in the rain, I don't have good sufficient cover and I'm using a telephoto that's not weather sealed. It's not a guarantee that it's going to break, but there's the potential there more than with the 100 to 500. But that is a lot smaller than that. It's also half the weight. Oh, and the best part, this is more than $2,000 cheaper. This lens is $599. This is $2,899. That is a good price for a lens that's going to 400 millimeters. That's F5. Control ring is there. Manual focus ring is there. Doesn't have the smooth tight. You don't have the stabilizer modes. So if you are specifically trying to pan or do certain things within the capabilities of the stabilizer, you get more options with that lens. That's one thing people don't realize, but these is on or off. Now this is not an L series lens. So this lens does not come with a hood. All right, so let's jump into the computer and take a look at some of the film strips, some of the photos that I got during F1. I was shooting on the R3 specifically because I know the frames per second are outrageous and it has incredible object tracking specifically a function just for cars and I will say it struggled <laughs>
All right, so we're out here on a farm road. It's a little windy today, so there's a little bit of noise up in the mic. Apologies. Got the 100 to 500 on. Where we chose to shoot this, where Gabriel's gonna ride his motorcycle back and forth. I don't even need to be zoomed in any more than 100, which is kind of a bit of a bummer because I'd love to do this at 500 mil. Now the F1 stuff was done around 200 to 300 mil. So this is kind of like the wide version test of this lens. Dialing the settings right now, it's a pretty bright but overcast day, which is good. So I want a really high aperture and I want to lower my shutter speed so there's drag. So it takes a couple tests to start out, but the big thing I'm going to do is come in and turn on subject detection for vehicles. Now, this camera will also detect a helmet on a motorcycle rider, so it's got both vehicle and helmet, so it should track onto him. And then the object, the idea, what you wanna do is you wanna track onto your subject and you wanna pan with them as they pass. Obviously shooting as high speed as possible. Servo mode, because you want everything to be constantly focusing. So servo mode, high speed continuous frames. I'm on F. 14 right now shutter speeds at 1 one hundredth of a second and that looks pretty good call Gabriel tell him to head down and see what we get whenever it's safe you're good he's fast so 125th f18 I'm gonna drop my ISO down to 200 I'll do that again sheesh you don't have to go as fast, but I gotta move up. I gotta move back a little bit, but you can, you're good to go. So that stopped it pretty dead. Oh wait, that one's pretty sharp. Ooh. No, I don't like those as much. Missed it though. It's tough. So because I don't have as much depth in the road as I'd like. I'm gonna try and get the same kind of shot, but with him oncoming. It's just harder because you want to pan. The whole point of motion blur is panning the, I don't know. I don't know. Man, the need for 500 for anything other than literally shooting birds or animals. Like even at F1, I was shooting around two to 250. Right now I'm shooting at 100. So I'd like to take a quick moment to thank our sponsor for today's video, which is Motion Array. Now you might have noticed we've broken this video up into three sections. Now we did that with these specific title cards. They were very easy to make and what they do is add more structure to this video. And we were able to make these titles very quickly in Premiere Pro. You see, one of the best things that Motion Array has is the ability to have the plugins directly to the editing software that I'm using. So back in the day, you used to have to make everything from scratch, learn an entire different program and software and and that was a whole day's worth of work to get some titles and cards to structure out your video which are now done so much faster now they have over 700,000 premium assets which is it's probably it's probably too many that's things from stock video to music files to motion graphics templates like everything you need to get going to create videos and it's a membership based so you either pay for a month or you pay for a year and you get access to everything there's no additional fees you can use whatever you're going to use and use it anywhere. You're looking at spending around $29.99 a month for unlimited downloads and unlimited use. All assets, all plugins included for one monthly fee. Or you can go $249 for the entire year for everything that you get with the monthly subscription, but a little bit cheaper. And if you subscribe through the link in the description below, you'll get an additional $50 off that subscription fee. So that's $199 instead of $249. And if you're running this as a business, that's a write-off. That helps you in the end you're making things faster, everybody wins. So again, link in description if you wanna check out Motion Array. Thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring this video and let's get back to shooting F1. All right, we are back in the studio. Time to look at some of these photos. So we're gonna look at a couple from F1 and a couple that we just took with Gabriel outside on his bike. Let's start with those since those might be the most fresh 
in our minds. Now, one of the issues I had just mere moments ago shooting with Gabriel is I was taking pictures right at the edge of the street. I had a 100-500. I was shooting at 100 because he was so close. So all the shots I have of him are very closely cropped. It fills the frame. It's too close for me, for my liking. Like, I don't get to see any of the landscape. I want to see more of the road. I want to see more trees. I want to see more sky. But the technique, uh, for the sake of this video, this is perfect. Background, if we zoom in, look at that. Nicely blurred. So even though it's not shot at like a 1.2 or a 2.8, etc., because we're panning, we're creating that motion blur, which is giving us, in a sense, a bokeh. That's F14. That means everything should be tack sharp. So if we actually zoom in and look at his bike, we can see everything is very, very sharp. Now it might be like the, um, if I'm gonna nitpick here, it could just be ever so slightly soft, like maybe just a wee bit. I'm looking at that BMW logo, it's not like tack hack sharp but it's i mean it's pretty good here's another shot where i tried to move back and actually get more of the road and more of the background the windshield looks pretty sharp here's another one of him coming from the other side bike is nice and sharp on this one happy with that i threw an edit on this already boom that looks good minus the entire mailbox and power lines whatever's ha whatever's happening right there not a fan so i went ahead into photoshop and removed that and that looks like so. So that shot actually looks great. That, that, that could be like a desktop background. I, he's probably gonna love that one. I feel like he is perfectly sharp for this purpose. The background is blurred enough to make it obviously look like he's moving fast. His tire is blurred. It's clearly moving. This vehicle is very clearly moving. That is exactly what we're trying to portray using this technique. Not supremely fast shutter, a high aperture while panning our bodies and cameras to stop the motion while making the object look like it's ripping down the road, which he was. Now, if we were to take this edit and just copy and paste it onto this shot, there you go. Maybe brighten that up a little bit. I'm happy with that. I mean, it's still, it's still a great shot. It's a little too closely cropped for me again. I'm not over the moon on it, but it illustrates the technique perfectly. We stopped the motion. The tires are moving very clearly. Background is panning, looks great. We've got depth based off of that pan. Now, sometimes, not sometimes actually, every Every time you will miss you will have a ton of shots that are just blurry but sometimes those look cool and if you're doing a carousel shot and let's say we had a picture of him with his bike and then we have a shot of him ripping one close up I think sometimes including some of those misses is kind of a cool stylistic choice so this shot right here where everything's out of focus maybe some might disagree with me and think Pete are you actually serious right now and yeah I am I've, I've done this before I think this is cool I think this is a cool style shot I would maybe crop it like I think that would look cool for a YouTube banner, it would look cool for a website banner, something like that with his name over top. If it was a YouTube channel, would look cool. So these aren't always total losses. These things can be recovered and they do look good and I would use that in a carousel or for something like a Twitter page or a Facebook banner, uh, etc. website banner that sort of thing. Moving on to the last shot here. It's okay. It's not my favorite. I probably wouldn't include this one in a set, but I wanted to show you anyway. That's before, uh, that's after. Of all of those shots, I got about three and I probably took a hundred. Now moving over to some of the F1 shots. Okay, so I wanna show you the lead up to the Red Bull car shot. Most of this stuff was this. I'm just gonna arrow through some of these. You miss a lot. They're coming so fast. That camera tracked them a few times and it worked very well, but it would lose them very quickly as well. At 320 kilometers, you'd see it rip by with your eyes and then the camera would just see mist because the, the track was wet. So you can see I missed focus. It's kind of in focus here if we zoom in, but not enough. Out of focus, out of focus, out of focus, out of focus the whole thing out of focus. Better luck next time. And it's kind of a rinse and repeat of that. Like this one didn't even get the lead up. That's just entirely out of focus. One, two, three, and four. Here's the Red Bull car coming. So Checo, I'm doing my homework, watching the show. This is out of focus, but it's looking kind of cool. I would use that as an abstract because I love the blur on the tires there. Like look at the blur lines coming off the, the colors of the rims to show which kind of tire they're using. That looks sick. This one's out of focus. Next one, out of focus, out of focus, bam suddenly dead center, it nailed it. So it's just trying it over and over and over, making sure you know the settings you want, they're working. And then it's just repetition until you get something you like. That shot, perfectly in focus. 
So I have two different edits, that one and that one. And then as it speeds off out of the frame, out of focus, out of focus, out of focus. That's mostly what was happening at F1. <laughs> so I, I did manage to get a, a few that were pretty cool. This one was pretty in focus. Got some close-ups that looked pretty cool, which you guys saw before. Cropping them differently so you just get the front wing. I think that looks pretty neat. Again, here's an example of me using a shot where it's just a blur. Because I think that's cool. I think it tells a bit of the story of like how insanely fast these cars are. Just a blur in the frame before they're gone. So in and amongst a carousel of this shot, maybe the garage, maybe this, then maybe this one, then this. I think that's where those work well. So there you have a quick look behind the scenes of what those photos actually look like coming raw in my camera onto the computer after I'm done shooting them. And there are instances where I might come back and have nothing. There are instances where I come back and I might have a ton but you're only gonna get stuff if you're out there, one, doing it, and two, practicing it. You also don't need a $3,000 lens to get those results. Any type of telephoto is going to shoot at F14. You can shoot at 100th or 160th of a second, and you are fully capable of panning that camera yourself. The biggest aid in capturing those was the frames per second and how fast it was. The tracking also helps if and when it works. So I hope with all of that information, showing you those lenses, sharing a bit of the technique, showing you the raw so that you can see it's not all amazing all the time. I hope you learned something. I hope you liked that. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and looking at the 100-500 Canon RF telephoto lens. It's a beast. The 100-400 is also a great, great option if you don't want to spend the money. I hope that helped. I hope you learned a little bit about settings when shooting action sports or trying to stop action while making it look like you've got something ripping through time. Even if it's not an F1 car, you can make stuff look like it's going real fast with that motion blur pan technique. Hope you enjoyed all the insight, looking at the photos, a little bit of a demo. Left a link below if you want to check the lens out. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already for more content around photography, video, and uh, there's always some random things too. <coughs> Nerf guns. Thanks again. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.